Good morning, everyone. Here's a question to focus our prayers. Who was it led King Cyrus to free the Jews from Babylon to rebuild the Jerusalem temple? Answer, a faithful God of the righteous. And what have such Old Testament deliverances got to do with us in 2021? Here's a clue, Psalm 39, verse 6, which says, Everyone is but a breath, even those who seem secure. People rush about in vain, heaping up wealth without knowing who will inherit it. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you alone. In our prayers, the response to Lord in your mercy is here our prayer. But first, let's pause a moment as we gather our Lenten thoughts, acknowledging our frail humanity, our sin, and God's gracious love for us. Let us pray. Saving Lord, we are so very grateful to you for our latter day deliverance from this COVID disease. We thank you for the work of nursing and social care staff, for medical scientists and drug research laboratory staff. We pray that each of these dedicated people may be strengthened in body and spirit, gratified by their achievements so far and allowed to recover their own health soon for they have striven to keep us and all peoples alive with the prospect of reliable vaccines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Crucified Lord, you died and rose again for our benefit, granting us the expectation of eternal life in glory we thank you for the lives of our recently departed, Marian Burt and Phil Game, stalwarts of our faith, both deeply and widely loved. In this time of pandemic, it's hard to cope with all human loss. We lift up for your special blessing all those who've died and those grieving for them all who continue to endure the illness termed long COVID and those in mourning for any reason. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator of the universe, we pray for our bruised planet in the light of this year's vital international conference in Glasgow. It's called COP26, to be hosted by the UK. May it please you to oversee honest preparation of the agendas, calm consideration of the climate issues threatening humanity and nature, and truthful, if unpopular, decisions on the action to be taken across the globe these necessary changes to our ways of consumption will doubtless affect business, national priorities and personal lifestyle. We have been warned, Lord, you have given us evidence. May we now heed your warning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Suffering, Lord Jesus, it must grieve you to see, as we do in daily news, wars and gross crimes against humanity, just as evil as those described in the book of Esther. We ask you to intercede in Yemen, China, Myanmar, and the Middle East, softening tyrants' hearts, 
and protecting the innocent thousands. We lift up to you all war refugees, the hungry, and those dying from despotism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. King of kings, we recognize and honor your plans for your people. We pray for our united kingdom, for our queen, and particularly for Prince Philip, for our archbishops, bishops, and clergy. We now especially remember our vicars, Chris, Jeff, and Mike, as they develop new plans for leading this parish. We pray for the members of all three churches as we yearn for your glory to be seen, believed, and honored in Bearwood, Merley, and beyond. As our government moves to make more NHS changes for public health and social care, for our trade relations with Europe, and in educating the young, may we continue to enjoy living in a caring society, proud of its Christian heritage of community cohesion. Only with your magnanimous help, we pray, will we be delivered from COVID so that we can truly build back better, like those repairers of the Jerusalem temple whom you liberated for the task. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.